Um, but anyways, we'll get into it. So I'll, I'll open. You guys good back there? What, what, when I speak, what, where am I looking? I'm looking at Me. You. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, we're just going to have a conversation. We got you covered on all angles. All right, cool. All right, let's do it. Ready to end? All right, guys, we are back for another episode. So I've been called a ton of things. I've been called anti-black. I've been called anti-Semitic. I've been called literally Hitler. I've been called a Nazi sympathizer. How do I earn these stripes? Well, anti-black came when I fiercely criticized in a moment that went viral, Black Lives Matter. There was a group of students at UCLA, and I told them that they were overprivileged Americans. Really excited about my guest today, who was the president, now is the chairman of Black Lives Matter in the New York chapter, and it is the most necessary conversation to have Hawk Newsom. Welcome to the Candace Owens Show. Thanks for having me, sister. Have you ever sat across from literally Hitler? Uh, I am now. (laughs) There's a first time time for everything. Um, So there's so much for us to unpack, and I'm just so actually happy that you're sitting across the table from me, Mm -hmm. because people love to talk about me. They love to characterize me. And I'm like, if you believe what you believe, have a conversation with someone. That's it. There's no one that I am afraid to have a conversation with because I I believe what I believe. Of course. And you and I are sort of on opposite sides of the spectrum, it would seem, I think. Absolutely. But at the same time, we both want what's best for black America. And so we just got to figure this out. That's it. Right. Right. (laughs) We just got to figure this out. Finding common ground, kind of um, enlightening each other in places right. where, where we need a better understanding. Right. And that's why I'm, that's, you know, that's really why I'm here. And that's to talk to you, to talk about Black Lives Matter, to talk about the uh, impact that it's had on society, the f- conversations that it's forced, the legislation that it's forced, um, just things that your viewership should be aware of. I agree. Right I on. think my viewership should be aware of the stuff that's going on. And the, a lot of people that follow me like, hate Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. um, for, for various reasons. And it's a I do have a lot of people that work with law enforcement. I had Brendan Tatum, actually. Um, I sp- had a conversation with him, and he was a former black police officer, and he just talked about how hostile it made everybody that was black in a car. And he would be like, I'm black. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm black. I'm one of you. And now you're hostile towards me because we've started yeah. this movement where he, he's like, I, I pulled him over because his blinker was off, right? Yeah. And And now I got a black guy telling me that I'm racist, and I'm looking at him like, I'm black. You have to look at the institution of policing. Uh, The institution of policing is racist, right? Since the Fugitive Slave Act, since they were capturing runaway slaves and bringing them back in. I've had black police officers tell me, I'm not black, I'm blue. Wait until you take that uniform off and you'll get shot down like any other black person in the street. And even though people come in with their best intention, you have to realize that on a policy side, and the way that, that policing is governed, their racist impl- and, you know, impl- implications. You look at um, Donald Trump and the First Step Act, right? Who did he say? He said the Fraternal Order of Police endorsed this. What does that tell you? That people are being locked up in disproportionate numbers and the police agree. The people that we're, race, we're, we're locking up, you know, they're, they're, there's, there's this racism attached to it. And they agreed. But people don't want to say that. So I don't – here's what I disagree with you on. I actually – because I've done so much studying the numbers. I disagree with, with the idea that there's police brutality that is disproportionately affecting black Americans. Mm-hmm. I don't disagree with you on the fact that black Americans are, are, are disproportionately being locked up. Mm-hmm. But what I disagree with you on is the reason why. It's nothing to do with, in my opinion – because we're black, like we're not. You, there's no sentence that you get 20 years because you're black. But there is economic privilege in this country, and if you're rich and you can get a great lawyer and you can get off, then great. Right? I have. I've had girls had their like uh, white friends of mine mm-hmm. had their entire DUI go away because their dad paid the judge twenty five thousand dollars. It's not because she was white. It was because her mm-hmm. dad had twenty five thousand dollars to pay to a judge. Yeah. Money, money doesn't see color. But, but the black community mm-hmm. is economically depressed. Why? Because we continue to vote for people that are economically depressing us. This is where my, you, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're not disagreeing. But these, these things were present before we had the right to vote. So you have to give me more than that. But but no, because in the, in the 1950s under Jim Crow, uh-huh. black economic growth was actually outpacing whites until the 1960s when they put in place, uh, LBJ put in place the Great Society yeah. and married us to the government. So I've, I've watched the economic trends. I've looked at them. My grandfather, born in the 40s um, on a sharecropping farm. Let me stop you. Did because better than you, my dad. You don't have to explain this to me because I think segregation hurt us. 
OK, in the form that we had black doctors, black lawyers. We had a strong black community where in which black people lived together and were very productive right. and had businesses when, you know, racist white people didn't come and burn them down like Black Wall Street. But we were very productive. All we needed was access to the same level of education, access to the same jobs. However, we just we didn't need to just come in and 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 segregate. What did that mean? That meant leave your neighborhood, take your talent and your resources and go and live somewhere where people don't want you, where they burn your house down and put burning crosses in your front yard and say leave our our town. You talk about wealth, right? The average college graduate that's black makes $13,000 less than the average white college graduate. You look at these numbers, you look at the wealth gap gap and how it, it extends. And then you say something to me like, well, they can afford lawyers. So now you have this wealth gap and you have white people who are sitting on top of this and black people who are on the bottom. And then you talk to me about the criminal justice system and, and, that's where it manifests. Well, well, hold on. First, I want to talk about this idea of white people making more money when they get off of school because there's so many other factors that could contribute to that. What are the majors that people are taking? Um, if you actually look at, <clears throat> like, uh, what's it called when you let people in because of the color of their skin? Affirmative action. Affirmative action it actually negatively impacts the black community because if you're going to go and just get into school because you're black mm -hmm. and your grades aren't going to be as good as your white classmates, when you get out of school, they look at your record and how you actually did. So it doesn't serve us. We actually just need to compete and then be get into the schools that we deserve to be in and then maybe we could be at the top of those classes mm -hmm. because we're in schools that we should be into. Dr. Thomas Sowell does a, a brilliant job of breaking this down mm -hmm. um, of uh, how – and there's also another book called Stop Helping Us, Affirmative Action being another thing that is supposed to be helping us. But if you look at the results, it's actually hurting us. Well, if you know my name before I changed it was Walter Newsom. Walter Newsom had a bachelor's degree. Walter Newsom was very good on purpose, on paper and Walter enunciated. Right. So Walter was white until he showed up to a job interview and they saw that he was black and he was treated differently. You mean to sit here and honestly tell me that employers don't discriminate against black people? Like this doesn't, have, that there was no need for a affirmative action. Like there were doors that had to be broken down. There were barriers that had to be, you know, we had to overcome, had to jump over these hurdles so you and I could have this conversation. If it wasn't for people taking these steps and people like me, you wouldn't have this show. Wait, hold on, Like, hold these on. things are I a necessity. Graduate, I didn't graduate university, so actually. <laughs> no, no, I, but, you're somewhere yeah, else. What I'm saying what I'm is that I'm not, so I'm not debating. I'm not debating. Having these opportunities right, because I'm not of the debate, Freedom Fighters I'm not going to debate whether like or not affirmative we needed action. Affirmative action. Yeah. I, I'm not interested in the past. I'm, look, I'm actually interested in just objectively looking at the results, which is that it's harming the black community. It's not helping us. Okay. I, I so when I you say the on the out on the how. on the outset, and I'm yeah, and, because uh, you still have these diversity officers. My friend says they're not. We're not he's able a to compete. Head diversity you officer at J.P. Morgan, and he literally has to go into these rooms and teach these people what diversity should look like. Diversity and inclusion is serious because. These corporations just don't get it. They're oblivious to these practices. A large number of America is oblivious to oppression. So let's let's apply it a different way. So let's say you flew you flew in here, right? Mm -hmm. Would you be happy if you knew that pilots were just being hired because they were black, um, and yet maybe not the best pilot who knew how to fly the plane? My sister, if you 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 know you're you're better with numbers than me. I, I like the law, right? Um, or do you just want the person that's actually the best equipped? What, what you what you would want to see is what you'd have to understand is black people have to work twice as hard and overcome twice as much. Me coming from the crack from the crack era in the South Bronx, mm -hmm. I had to work twice as hard just to survive and then thrive in school in schools that were subpar in schools that put me on a path to go to jail as opposed to college. Oh, I agree with you about the education system. We can get yeah. into that, but again, that's that that brings me to the Democrat so party. So what I'm telling you is, if it's <laughs> a black saying? man like one of my friends. His name is Denville, who's flying that plane. I look at that black man and say, wow, brother, you had to work twice as hard to get there. See, because your think, family damn, didn't I really have hope those opportunities. I this guy knows how to land the plane. The, I don't the, care what color yeah, it is. But I mean, I, I see a black person in positions. Now, they're still black firsts, right? Like, Louisiana has its first black female mayor. 
I was just there last week, and I'm like, wow. So you say, I just want to see the plan, the plane land. Yeah. I say, wow, that's progress. Right. You like, know, and I, I want the person that's best equipped. If I have to go in tomorrow um, and get surgery on my heart, I don't want to say, I'm really happy this black this black doctor is doing this. I want to know that this person knows what the hell he's what doing. What I contend is those black doctors had to work twice as hard. Uh, D- Dr. Ben Carson worked very hard, but he's a conservative. Right, and he's called stupid, and he's called an Uncle Tom, and he's called a coon because he's trying to. He's a literal brain surgeon that is called yeah. stupid and rejected by our community as he's trying Why? to explain to us because he has he has expertly, and if Why? you if you read his stuff, explains to the black community that the help is hurting, and he he had, no one has a, a story about coming from nothing harder more mm-hmm. than than Doctor Condoleezza Rice and Doctor Ben Carson, literally mm-hmm. nothing. You right, leave my guy from Harlem, the Bronx, out, Colin Powell. I'll leave my no, guy Colin from pa- my yeah, Colin Powell too. Yeah, you yeah, can't leave him out. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, and so they make yeah. it. And they then go back and try to offer the community, hey, guys, this is what's going on. I'm now at the top, and I'm trying what's to ben tell Carson you something. What's Ben Carson offering? Dr. Ben Carson. He, he, what, what's he's offering? He, he, works for, he works for HUD. I mean, a lot of people have jobs that and don't he, do he We tr- know this, right? He has tried to explain to the black community. <laughs> we this, know this, that. This is, this is what bothers that. me we is that, that the black community is so quick to tear down people that have the most amazing feats, and yet we'll, be, we'll put LeBron James up and be like, he's a hero. He put on a Beto cat. No, listen to what Dr. Ben, have you read his books? He's trying to help the black community, what? and we're so ignorant that we just go, oh, well, he's a conservative, so no, what's he see, doing? I, he's got a job. He's not I, doing I, I, I beg, I beg to differ. He broke barriers. I, I beg to differ. We learned about this man in school, right? We learned about him in school. But when you look at people and you say, okay, are they fighting for us? You are prejudging. Get that out of your mind. Not all black people think like that. You lead a movement where black people don't think like that. So don't say all black people feel this way because they don't. About what? About Ben Carson because he's a conservative. No, we don't. We feel that way because he. we don't see the end result, the work product that he has. Like, I judge each party. I judge the person. I think America's too caught up in these identity politics and, and in this polar, polarizing culture where we just can't say, hey, that's a good man or that's a good woman. That person can't be good or do good things if they're on the opposite side of the political spectrum to me. Um, Obama, I had a lot, I love Obama, but I had a lot of problems with his administration. Okay. Now I do not like Donald Trump, but I say, wow, thank you for the first step act. I say, why didn't the Democrats do that when they had the power. You see the balance in this dynamic? So if I'm sitting here saying, hey, I'm not feeling that, brother, it's because... I feel a certain way. About right. Well, you I know. Understand? And and it's so for me, you got you got some of the most educated and the people that have you talked about breaking barriers. That's why I brought them up. People that have broken barriers. And yet our community has rejected them because our goals have been reset culturally. We have a community that wants to uplift and hail LeBron James when he puts on a Beto cap, a community that wants to hail Colin Kaepernick when he takes a knee, half white Colin Kaepernick when he takes a knee and says he's, he's putting uh, shedding light on an issue. And then a community that rejects Clarence Thomas, who makes it to the Supreme right. Court. That rejects wait, um, wait, Dr. I ben Carson. Stop you right there. Let's go back to Colin Kaepernick. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, oh, let me just yeah. finish the point, right? That, that rejects Dr. Ben Carson, a community that rejects Dr. Connolly's Rice, who literally made it from times that they, it, you could not make it as a black person because they're old. You know what I, I'm saying? I have. Uh, and they're called Coons and Uncle Toms no, and Trainers. No, no. The black folk like Condoleezza Rice. The black folk like Now that Con- she's not in the White House. They love them Colin Now that she's Powell. not in the White House. She was with Bush. She was with but Bush. But it doesn't matter. Like, That's the point. It's like yeah, you, it doesn't you, matter you, because he let thousands of people die in Katrina. But let's go back to Colin Kaepernick, right? And um, let's talk about Clarence Thomas, who when there's cases before the Supreme Court that really affects us, that really affect us, he stays silent. He usually votes on the opposite side of our rights. Name one case. You know what, you know what, um, you, know what really, you know what really bothers me about the Supreme Court? What? Is when black folks say, I'll fight you the Supreme Court. You know what history has shown me about the Supreme Court? It's not on the side of black Americans. Okay, well that's, well then, you should know that up until, you know, it was it was leftist up until we got Brett Kavanaugh on there. So, um, if you have an issue with the Supreme Court, I can trace everything back to the Democrats and how they what they've done to the black so you community. Think you, and we have blinders okay. on right so now. So what? What, what I mean, did? What but what? How? The, name what one way the, that Clarence Thomas has been anti-black. No, it's, it's, in a it's row. not even. It's not even. It's he not even it. that. You it's, can't. It's you can't not say even, that. It's, it's just it's, because it's he's not, conservative. There was a Fourth Amendment case. There was a Fourth Amendment case where it was. Um, oh, what was it? Exigent circumstances, right? Which means police could kick in your door if it sounds like you're destroying evidence. How the hell? 
Like, I'm a fan of the Constitution. Right. I think the greatest weapon that the black man has in this country is the, I'm sorry, the black man and woman have in this country is the Constitution. And when people start to trample on that Constitution, that's when everything goes away. And uh, your guy, right, sided on, on the case of law enforcement and said that, hey, they could— uh, do away with your Fourth Amendment right to protections against illegal search and seizure if it sounds like they're breaking down, uh, they're, they're destroying evidence within this house. There are exceptions to the Fourth Amendment, and they made this one of them. I have a serious problem with that. That means a police officer can just come to my door, right? And if it sounds like I'm destroying evidence— then he can tear it down. So you think he did that because he wanted to harm the black community, not because he looked at something objectively and thought that would be a good decision for America. You said, <sighs> you think Clarence Thomas sat, sat behind it's his a- desk and said, is this going to hurt the black community? Okay, great. I'm going to, you, you know, that's not right. You know, that, you no, know that's see, not the right. Thing is, you might disagree the with way, the decision that he made. It's the way people's minds have been conditioned. But he, but it's the way people's minds have been conditioned. Black people's minds. Now, see, here's the problem, right? You can say that black people's minds have been conditioned in the wrong way when you look at LeBron James, but you can't say that this man's mind has been conditioned in a way that's anti-black because of the same society where you find black people who don't associate with black people. They don't socialize with black people. They don't identify with black Black people. They don't live amongst black people. They don't feel the struggles of black people. This is conditioning. Black girls who hate themselves and hate the color of their skin and hate their hair is because society has always told them that it was ugly. Like we, we, we are conditioned in two ways and we have to break down that conditioning and find a new way to think. And that's why you and I are here. Right. So we could really figure this thing out. Okay, what program can we get black folks on to where they're moving forward in in a positive direction, in an uplifting, in an independent direction? Independence is a a very important word. That's it. It's a very important word. That's it. And and I I talk about this all the time is I think the biggest problem facing the black community is not police brutality by any regards. It's like that. Mm -hmm. If I had to make a list of 100 things that were impacting the black community, police brutality wouldn't even be on the top 100. I I think it's it's a a scam. It's a leftist scam. it's, it's, Hold it's on, let me finish. A it's a leftist yeah. scam. It's, I truly believe it's a leftist scam. It's not helping. It's not helping them. What's it helping whatsoever? And it's actually reversing and and harming our community more because what the left does all the time is they seize a new show pony that they want us to be obsessed with and looking at all the time uh, every four years so that they can control our vote and they can make us emotional. And in 2016, it was the myth of and when I say myth of police brutality, I mean that when you look at the rate. White men and Hispanic men are being shot down at a higher rate, not more of them, a higher rate than black men, okay? So unless there's a Hispanic Lives Matter, so that means to me, and the timing of it is always suspicious, when all of a sudden we're supposed to be in the street protesting, it's right before election cycles, they release some information and black people are supposed to be outraged, our community is too emotional, point blank, period. We have to start to be rational and say, hmm, now... I know that right now is election cycle and every single night on CNN, they're showing me images of black men dying. Why would that be? Why is it that after Trump won, those images magically went away? Nobody cared about Black Lives Matter movement. I haven't, I can't find CNN doing all the specials. It was like every day, prime time was a Black Lives Matter thing. Trump won, they were like, all right, bye. Then they went on to rape and they went on to Me Too and they went on to trying to stop this and that. And I think that that is the biggest problem in the black community is that we don't realize that we have been emotionally manipulated and it's all for votes. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay. Now, what we have to do is we have to, that was that was loaded. Candace, you give me a lot to unpack and dissect. 2016, yeah. you said that they rolled out uh, police brutality. I say that white liberals pulled back on police brutality during that election cycle. Hillary Clinton would not say Black Lives Matter. They left us hanging. Not her. I start, yes, she did. CNN, I'm talking no, about. No, no, CNN, well, you gotta look, you gotta look at CNN, right? You gotta look at CNN for what it is. CNN, Donna Brazil, the DNC, and Hillary Clinton cheated Bernie. I know. Right? And then turn around and say, hey, Donald Trump's cheating. If <laughs> Donald Trump is cheating, right? Right. How dare you point your crooked ass fingers at him when you're doing the same thing? Amen. That's just me. Leave that up to the people to say, hey, you know what? We want justice. Figure this out on both sides. Post-election Donald Trump, I have contacts at CNN. I had a video of a man named Andrew Kearse who was placed in the back of a police car and said, I can't breathe 70 
times in 17 minutes and that cop crack jokes like if you want to breathe maybe you shouldn't run from the police Mm -hmm. or it's really hot back could you imagine the last 17 minutes of your life you're begging someone for air and they're laughing at you and they let that man die i went to cnn you'll love this the attorney general wouldn't let me in to the meeting because i'm an activist and they know my style so i had his wife record the footage that they let her see in confidentiality. She brought me back the 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 um recording. And I said, hey, these people are playing games. They're not going to go after this cop and seek an indictment. I'm going to release this tape. I call CNN. You know, Trump's doing so much. They care more about Trump than they do about Black Lives Matter. My sister, you are right. That's my point. My, my sister, but when you say Black Lives Matter and police brutality is a sham, it's not. No, no, it's just, I'm just it's telling just, you the numbers. It's just, the numbers it's just, is it's, that it doesn't it's disproportionately most, affect black men. It's the most graphic, symbolic form of white supremacist oppression that we see no, it's not. all the time. No, no, radicalized feminism is the, is the closest oh, see, thing to white see, supremacy. You know what? You get crazy like I get crazy. Yeah, wh- I'm going to ra- let you go down that radicalized, crazy street Radicalized by yourself, feminism is the Christine listen, Blasey listen. Ford, Lena Dunham, Kesha types are actually, that's the closest thing to white supremacy I've seen. Unfiltered, believe me, because I'm white and I'm a woman, is the closest thing to white supremacy. Listen, listen let you, me tell you something. Do you know the, the names of any white or Hispanic people do, that were killed these, by police? These, do I what? Do you know the names of any white or Hispanic people that were killed on um, Oh my God. Um, oh my God. Uh, Lynn Baez. Um, Do I know why um, I'm asking you this? Why? If your Anthony issue Baez. is police brutality, yeah, why are Baez. you making it? And, and, and we know for a fact that they are black Erickson men Brito. are not brutalized at a Erickson higher Brito. rate than white people or Hispanic people. Why not just make it a movement about the things that go wrong no, in the see, police? Here's the thing when black people get their rights, Everybody gets rights. You know history. When we got the right to vote, everybody got the right to vote. When we were able to sit at the front of the bus, everybody was there. When we went to college, everyone went. We had a trailblazers. Not only do we set trends in culture, in music, in fashion, but also in law. Like, this is what we do. So let us kick this door in. And I'm so sick and tired. You could be a woman's rights, you know, activist. You could be an immigrant's rights activist and and be pro-Latinx communities. And and you could be pro-Israel. And if you say anything in this country, I I just love what Jewish people have done. Because, like, those are the people you don't want beef with. I wish black people would follow I that. just said that in the last I, podcast. Like the one we, thing that black we, people need to do is like the Jewish community came with the clothes on their back and look at where they are. Do you know it. why? Because they actually had a community. That's it. They had a community. They helped each other out. Is real. They help each other like, out. If, and if, I've if never I heard make black people do anything, it'd be build a build stronger. George, you never see though. You and, never um, see Jewish people in the streets protesting and screaming about stuff. Are you kidding they just me? Get to work. Do you know what the Anti Defamation League is? I have a relationship with the president, the regional director of the Anti Defamation League. What was the they last are in the streets? Always burning in the streets. down Starbucks. They are always. In Brooklyn, they oh, they were in the streets when that that white supremacist, uh, the the neo Nazi shot up the, the the place in Pittsburgh. They had, don't don't misinform people, Candace. A lot of people are listening uh, to you. I, I, don't misinform I, I, I people. Will, I will stand don't corrected. Mis, don't misinform will, people. And if you want to stand corrected, you talk to I will me, look at it and I will I will talk look at it. About I've burning not down seen, Starbucks. Let me tell you something. I've not seen Jewish people burn down their own communities. When, when did when did when black people upset. have the highest? Um, Highest rate to home ownership. So you're ownership. saying they have Jewish when people? Did, when did black people have the highest rate to home ownership? Uh, if I had to guess, I would put it probably somewhere in 50s. 50s, 60s. I was right. Right? I'm good. Uh, we wealth, highest, highest gains in wealth. All, all back then, before before we married the government because of we, Democrats. What were we doing back then? We were, Our families were together. The we number one issue. Burning in the, shit down. No, the number one. We were burning shit down and we scared the crap out of America. No. They said these are crazy. We better start giving no, them some things. No, 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 no. For we got a serious no, 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 problem. No, no, no. On I'm going pu- to push back on that. <laughs> what we were doing was that our families were together. You better be happy that we are not burning the things big, down. We are. It's like 0.1% no, no. of, of. When was the last time you saw something burn no, down? No, 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 no. You're, you're, There's see, this so is, many marches. You have when was su- the last you have time you saw platform. something burn down? This is what bothers me. You have such a platform to hit. The biggest issue facing the black community today is father absence. They broke down our families. They moved the fathers from the home. Barack Obama tells you what happens when you move the, remove the fathers from the home. You have a, a, a Stop tw- misinforming 20, people. 
For I'm misinforming people. I'm not. The I'm not. Let me let me finish. How, how am I? Black people. It's father absence. It's the food that we eat. No, 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 no. It's the food it's we eat. It's father absence. And this is a correctable problem. It's the sugar. It's the the grease. It's these fast food companies and these soda companies poisoning us. And how is this not only a black problem? Republicans care about health care and their tax dollars going toward that. They should put money in getting black people healthier because all they do is poison us and, and promote these sugary drinks, these sugary foods and shove them down our throats. And black people are walking around, their legs are swollen. My dad died on his seventh heart attack. That's what's killing us. That's the biggest form of racism. Mm. The food. Do you realize that they send food with different chemicals in it to black uh, to black communities, a Jewish man, Dr. Mark Hyman, really set me down and was like, check this out. The Black Panthers were on this food kick. Here's why. Because people are poisoning you through your food. And I really had to absorb that. If you want to talk about the absence of fathers, then you look look at the American government putting all these fathers in jails at disproportionate rates. Black people go to jail at higher rates than white that people. That is correct. I can explain to you crimes. how that's and related to father absence. All the way if you down listen, to children. And I don't mean to, to cut you off. I just get excited. Everything, you crazy? I'm crazy no, too, everything sister is related to father absence. So the one thing that they did strategically after the 50s when LBJ came in and said, okay, he has he's on the record, LBJ Democrat president saying, you know, these have the right to vote. We have to give them something a little bit to make them think that we're helping when they're actually hurting us. So they gave us the welfare programs. What did the welfare programs do? They successfully broke down the black family. The single motherhood rate in the 1960s was at 23% in our community. The single motherhood rate today is at 74%. Barack Obama actually gave a brilliant speech talking about what father absence actually does. If you want to kill an entire uh, entire community, all you have to do is remove the fathers, okay? That kid is, is 20 times more likely to go to jail, six times more likely to drop out of high school. Everything that we're talking about here can be related back to father we absence. took them out of the, 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 the welfare system actually created an initiative to, to, to women. We will give you more money. It's true. This is, Come on. This is not a How myth. How did they enforce it? How did they enforce it? They, I grew up in this. They incentivized it. I grew up in They incentivized it. You know they would do pop-up. This is why they're having you know five, they six, seven kids. They would do pop-up visits. They want more money. You know more they would money. do pop-up yes, visits to make, sure, the guy to make sure that the men were out of the home. Yes. I'm, now, who did this? Who did this? Whose policies were this? Whose were they? Who, who are the people that are fighting? Whose were who, they? Who, LBJ and the Great Society Act. Okay. And what country? What do you mean what country? What country in did America. this happen? In America. Yeah. So, so you're okay. agreeing with me. So, so these are systems. So why don't you talk these, about that? When you talk about systems. Black Lives Matter, talk about putting fathers back in the home. You think people don't, sis? No, I really don't. You think people no, don't? You, 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 uh, like, the, this This happens consistently. When you talk about Black Lives Matter, I would be the biggest Matter, champion for you Black talk Lives about, Matter You talk about, about a absence. network of people, like brothers uplifting, brothers brothers addressing their masculinity. I don't like the term toxic masculinity. It's I horrible. use it sometimes. It's horrible. It's because usually when they talk feminists. about this, they're talking about black men. They are. But listen to what I'm telling you. There are people working. I work with groups that, like, are building stronger dads. What you got to understand is, Oppression exists in America, and you said it didn't. Oppression, that shit is oppressive. Wait, wait, wait. Taking these fathers out of these homes, wait, here. that's oppressive. Wait, hold on. And, 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 and wait, wait, I'm going to let, let you finish, right? I'm, I'm going to let you finish, but I got to say this, right? When you hear me talk about oppression and racism, you think I'm only talking about Republicans. I'm talking about the Democrats, too. They did it to our communities. Like, a they lot did of it. people in this Black Lives Matter movement have serious problems with Democrats like Kamala Harris, like Cory Booker. We're like, oh, hell no. That being black thing just ain't going to get it no more. Kamala and Harris I and I started Tupac talking Biggie. about she this in two wait. six. She just came right she out. She was smoking weed she listening came, to Tupac and Biggie, she, came, right? she didn't even wait. It's like, like <laughs> could you wait to pander? Nope, I'm going to do it day two that I announced my presidency. But, it's like, just talk to the black community about the issues. I, I would love it if someone got on my platform and talked about father absence. That's more coffee. When... when oh, I, I loved, and this is why, and I'll tell you why I support Trump, is because he held no punches. He went through every statistic that we were losing. Father absence, this, this, that, this, his, the prison race, blah, blah, blah. What do you have to lose? Finally, kept it real. You're losing. What do you have to lose? On the other side, Democrats, we're going to give you more. The Black Caucus stood and applauded more food stamps. The welfare system is harming the black community. Strategically, it was Why? oppressive. It was Why? oppressive when it was when it came into when it came so into shape. You got this. No, no. The, you got this. I, it was oppressive. She's admitting that, that oppression I have exists. Said, I She's have, admitting. I have said oh, a, a thousand times. Man. 
a thousand times when people ask me on record, they say, Candace, are you saying that there aren't forms of, pre- of oppression? I say, if you choose and you take the rope the government is going to give you to hang yourself, yeah, but you have an option. No. You either got to figure it out and realize that we've been in the system for 60 no. years for Democrats and, and we're the voter mules and we're carrying their votes and they want to make sure they never want to fix our problems. You want to know why, Hawk? Why? Because they stump on our problems. What the hell they are they going to run they on? They if we don't it. have problems, what are they going to run on? They love it. Right? They so love it. so what, what's crazy to me is that most black people, you get in the room, they'll tell you, Republicans are racist. I'm like, the Democrats created every oppressive system that we talk about when we say, oh, prisons, blah, blah, blah. That's because the followers from the home. Oh, food stamps, welfare, blah, blah, blah. What have the Republicans, like, 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 okay, where have the Republicans failed black people? That they haven't done anything to correct it. What else have they done? In my, in my opinion, I think that the worst thing is that, so I defend either side. I say the Democrats created the oppressive system. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Republicans, obviously, like, they're the ones that voted for us to have our rights and all that stuff. It was all done. Blacks people used to be Republicans. The Republicans mm-hmm. were lynched in the South. It was black Republicans that were lynched and hung from trees. But um, the Democrats became our friends, and they started pretending they were helping us with the welfare programs. The Republicans, I think, just haven't done enough to try to come into our communities. Um, you know, specifically, you know some things that the Republicans have done that you're like, nah, this isn't it. This isn't good for us. This isn't good for this country. What if, you, if, I, I, if you would name it, I'll admit no, it. No, no, no. See, I, I want you to tell me. Like, I, I want Honestly, you to tell me. Honestly, when I trace, and, and, and I could say that I primarily read Dr. Thomas Sowell and Walter E. Williams, and they've traced everything that's happened since we took counts from the government. My problem is with the Democrats. See, now, but I'm not, I'm not willing to not to, like, if you said this yeah. Republican no, did no, this, I'm I, not going to. I won't give you that. I'll leave that up to you to research because I what think did they that do? there's something very powerful in your silence. But no, no, right. but it's not. Just tell I me. I, I'll admit it right now. We're on the pod. I, I mean, it's not powerful. Uh, what, I genuinely what's, what's don't know what Republicans did to us. Uh, Mitch, Mitch Connell, right? Mitch McConnell. Uh, yeah, he's, he's Trump's guy, right? Whatever. Ish. Um, ish. Yeah. Uh, he supported a judge who was was looking for an, a federal appointment who was suppressing black votes. Was in favor of um, of court decisions that oppress black folks. If you look back, right, not only did the Republicans give up around the 1960s on getting the black vote, but they, they have actively sought to oppress the black vote. Okay, so you what? look at most of these uh, the, the the voting issues. You look at, at, at voter suppression, right, and it's Republicans behind this. Now you said if I was right. You'd admit it. No, but I'm just asking you to explain it further because I, I, I want people that are so hearing, their, their laws hearing like, you to hear. Their, their laws like you have to do three black flips, two somersaults, and a moonwalk. You mean walk. have an ID? Yeah, uh, an ID so you, do or, you think black or people, other forms. Let me ask you a question. Other, do you think black people are too stupid to get a driver's license? Why would you call black people Because stupid, to me, I'm, I'm offended stupid. that people call You're that. Black. No, I'm, I'm asking You're you something. Black. I'm asking you something. I'm offended when people say to me that, that that oppresses us. I'm like, I don't know a single black person that doesn't have ID. You can't drive. You can't buy a pack of cigarettes. You can't buy alcohol. Don't think we're so stupid that we can't figure out how to get ID. It's insulting to call that okay. voter suppression. Okay. It's insulting. What about the closing? And do you know and a single black about, person that doesn't about, have ID? Yeah, I do. I actually do. Really? What well, about the because in I don't know when, a single when black you person go have ID. to get ID, they you need three other. How are they living without other, ID? You can't you go need, to school. You need boy. three, four other. You can go to school. You get a school ID. Okay, but, right? But they won't take that at the polls. So you're saying you they know won't black take people that at, at the polls at 18 years old yes. who, who, that that cannot figure out how to get an ID. No, it's not. That's insulting. Uh, see, that's insulting is, to our no, no, community. No, what you don't understand is you need uh, social security numbers. You need. Uh, bank statement. You might need something mailed to your house. Bills. Like these kids aren't receiving dr- bills. Uh, yeah, they, you need certain forms of information. Social security Se- number. Yeah. Several different pieces of information that a lot of people just don't have. And, and if okay, black people can't harping. figure out how you're to harping. get ID, you're we have harping. a way bigger okay. problem. We're okay. not that take, stupid. I, I will take, not accept that we're too stupid to get ID. I don't take, know a single. I got cousins that, that live in the projects. The Everybody has it. You can't work without ID. You can't work without ID. I get it. Yes, you, you can't can. work. Yes, you can't work unless you're working under the table. You got to have some form. ID when they run your social security number and all that stuff you have to give them something to work with no, actually you don't you, you just go in there you give them a social you don't have to have your physical yes you do they have to make a copy card. they have to make no, a copy they don't. Not your social security card what of your ID do you live in do you live amongst so these people me if you just that you write... represent I'm from the South Bronx I'm from you think I, Harlem you think I was, I'm from New York City where do you think I was, you you think I was raised who rich who do you live amongst this is, this is what's so crazy I'm, I'm asking you like second... I'm asking you who do you live amongst I live in I live one of the most oppressed I live in Philly one of the poorest one of the poorest cities in America and you don't know these problems then you don't know your people did you Socialize with people in your community? Did you socialize with people in your community? Okay, because I know these problems. I know people who work. 
without you're undermining, IDs. You're, I, no, you're undermining I'm, I'm, not, our community. I'm telling the truth. Okay, so explain to me this. The only right? trouble people that have a gay is to me this. Leave explain prison. to me this why we were down in Florida filing lawsuits because Republican districts were turning people away. Okay? They were taking, removing people from voter lists. These were, what's his name? Kemp? I helped Stacey Abrams. I went down there and helped her campaign. He was aggressively attacking black voters, okay, pulling people off buses. Like, the, and Donald Trump supported him. Donald Trump supported what this woman. What do you mean pulling people who, off of buses? Uh, there was a group of people going to do their uh, early voting thing or whatever they were doing. And they actually, the police stopped the bus, told them they couldn't do this. These these things happened. So they just said, so I just want to get the story straight. Pass me my phone. So they pulled, let's let's they, pull it up. Yeah, we can pull, look at it so together. So they, they stopped the bus and, and, and the police said, you're not allowed to vote because you're black. No. Uh, that basically, just doesn't seem like the, a very the, the likely reason, story. Right? The reason, right, the reason was that the, the bus was from a nonprofit. Right, might have been because the bus wasn't from Georgia or something. Because there's a lot of people that are nah, there's see, a lot of voter but, but, fraud. But see, see, you talking about fraud? You're being fraudulent. I'm not. You said, said if I up. give you a good reason, I'm not stopping right? you from looking you it up. You said if I give you a good reason, well, you'd undermining admit to us it. and saying we're too dumb to get IDs. No, is it's not, not a good about reason. being like dumb that. and not. Some people just don't have IDs. Some people can't put the information together to get IDs. That it, it just it just. Happens so I, sometimes. this is when I say There's that other we've, ways we've accepted the status that. of like, like we're too like this is what but I hate because this, this brainwashes reason. when I see black people being like we can't get voter ID laws because that means that we're gonna have to get our ID. No, you gotta get see, your ID to live life, reason. black people. That's, get that's up, get not, up off your ass. You big. have to get an ID to live life. Okay, so uh, that this that that's get up off your ass. You yeah. talk like that's uh, undermining. That's insulting. See, this is why people call you name. You speak. Sometimes, and I'm saying this from a very earnest place, you, you talk like a person who hates black people. No, I'm talking like if I was your mother, you need to get up off your ass and get an ID. Listen, we need that. We need a little more people telling us to get up off our asses and do stuff. We need, to, we need to stop being handed excuses and start being told, you know how to do this. Figure out what you need to do. You are a, a American. It's not figure out, It's not hard. You've got Google now. How mm -hmm. can I get my ID? Okay? I yeah, didn't have the most supportive Wisconsin. system when I was growing up. Let's just say I didn't have. I had to figure out everything to do I by did, myself. I didn't have I parents did that could help me do anything. in Wisconsin. Not only did they need... Their 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 school ID. They needed a state ID that was that was that was current in the school. They needed a letter from the registrar's office. They needed all of these things to get registered to vote, or else their applications would decline. Wait, like there's there's been syst okay. You can vote. You can they, register to vote online with no ID. That's why that's why people are fighting no, for ID laws. You, you can't in Wisconsin. Did it. That's an Wisconsin? absolute falsehood. Okay, that that's an absolute in Wisconsin? falsehood. Yeah, like okay, I didn't, I didn't. Like, like, like we got, we got to be real. There have been case after case, right, where voter suppression happened, and you know this. No, no, no. And it was the Republicans that was behind it. No, what I'm like, saying okay. to you is that telling people that they need ID to vote to me is not voter suppression. Listen, you know what? People should have IDs. Thank I'm, you. I'm Thank not going to sit here and advocate. We just get to advocate. a point where it's like stop like, telling black people but, like but, you shouldn't have to have ID and like it's like that. That to me is like this is why we're not doing well in society. I can't even imagine a Jewish people being like. The fact that we've been asked to have ID is insulting. And it, we're, like they would be like, no, any Jewish person, and this is what I talk about with parenting, you say it's insulting when I parent the black community. The black community needs some parents right now, okay? You need to figure out how to get an ID to be successful in life, to get a job, to do anything that you want in life, to, to fly in a plane, okay? To, to leave your city, to do anything, you need an ID. So mm -hmm. we don't need people telling our community that it's insulting and we're being oppressed because we're being asked to be functional human beings in society. See, but you're talking about, you're talking about, Voter IDs, cool. Let's talk about malfunctioning machines, right? That happens all Let's over. talk about malfunction. Usually, when it's blacks trying to vote in Republican districts, right? Let's talk about people's names. So like people's names. No, Let's talk a, about people's names being taken like, off. Yeah, yeah we where's should. The, where's the bus? Let's talk Find about. It's, it's here. It's let's talk about people's names being taken off voter rolls. Let's talk about close to the election. How I was down in Pennsylvania. Like I don't know what you do. But I'm really on the streets. Mm. I wear a suit five times a year. I'm really in Wisconsin registering kids to vote, bipartisan completely. Yeah. I'm you in do Pennsylvania doing the same thing, right? And these 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 websites don't work. Now, now I'm gonna blow your mind, right? Democrats do it too. But it's in greater numbers with Republicans. Democrats repress, suppress votes in the Bronx, where I'm from. And and I call them out on it. Like this is a sick. But why would Democrats sick. suppress black votes when they're the ones that get it? Ah, what if we're in a black district 
and you have the party that maintains the status quo, right? Then wants to maintain their status quo. What's the status quo? You look at the most, I'm sorry, you look at the most messed up black communities in the country and they're led by Democrats, yeah. right? Right. 100%. So you have these people who get government money. They give money to nonprofits, and it's this perpetual cycle of nothingness. Of course, because right? they want to keep them on the problems. why that's why our kids are running around killing each other. Mm -hmm. That's why drugs and crime is running rampant, because the people that they trust who look like them are actually part of this system which is oppressing Maxine them. Waters living outside That's of your it. district in a $6 million home. I mean, we could, uh, all of these people that yeah. pretend to be black leaders, they come at me, come at my throat. I'm not, I'm not the one getting rich off of black people. Okay. Like th that's just the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm trying to wake you up to the fact that you are voting for a party that hasn't served you. Now I, Let's say I'm wrong and, and, and voter suppression is happening. It's at the hands of the Republicans. And I promise you, that if nothing else, I am a person that researches. Okay. And I mm -hmm. read and I research and I will research it. You cannot objectively say that you think that Republicans have done more harms to black than Democrats. Can See, you? <laughs> this is the problem. I, I want to know. I just want to know. This is. Because I get demonized is, for going after the this left. This is the problem. You see Republicans. No, I'm just Dem asking you. you We're talking about you it. See, I'm staying on topic. You see Republicans and Democrats. You asked me a I question. I see America oppressing. No, no, but you, you asked cannot, me a you question. Cannot, you cannot and ask me. And I answered me. your question. You cannot ask me. Um, uh, what's the most effective way to kill per a person, uh, an explosion or a bullet to the brain? Either way, that person's still dead. But either I, way, either way, we're still oppressed. No, but why I'm saying, way, the why okay. I'm saying this is because you, you, okay. I want to have so this wanna, honest, open dialogue with you these, and to present, allow you to present very, the things that Republicans the, have done to black the, people. At the very least, yeah. Democrats have done more to help than Republicans. At the very least. At the very least, even though uh, I don't know helped? what the percentage is of these programs that work, that 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 that, that aren't working, that that actually work, they are fighting for our children. They they are trying to help in some small, minute ways. They are trying to unite children with their families at the border now. Right. Even though I know Barack Obama separated more people than anyone else. They're doing it now. Republicans don't even help when it's the right hold thing up, to hold do. Up. I got to pause you right it's, there. It's, they don't even help when it's the right thing right to do. There. I got to pause uh -huh. you right there. First off, we're talking about the black community. I don't want to talk about illegal immigrants because until the black community is fixed, I do not care on the record about a single illegal immigrant. You want me to care about a child separated from its mother at the border because their mother was doing something illegal and got caught? Does anybody cry when, when black parents get locked up um, and they have to be separated from their I children do. for years? Okay, so stop. You can miss me entirely with I the do. illegal immigrant argument. I do. Especially because illegal immigration negatively impacts who, first and foremost? Black men between the ages of 18 and 21. So asking the black community to stand up for illegal immigrants is like asking me to take a shovel and dig my own grave. Not doing it, okay? Won't do it. We'll give no focus to illegal immigrants until the 3.9 million black so kids about, that are in poverty you don't care are brought above the poverty immigrants. line. I, uh, you black you immigrants coming over the border? You, yeah. They are? Yeah. What countries? Uh, perfect. I, didn't know, I actually I, didn't I got know. this information for you. Sub-Saharan immigrants have much higher educational attainment uh, rates compared to overall foreign and native Sub-Saharan is Africa. Born, yes. So not coming over the border. You said over the border sep child separation. We have various borders. So some borders are there that are like metaphorical, I but, guess. But, but, you but you're still coming separation. into this country, right? right? Right. You're still coming in, whether it's it's to the north or, or the south. There's still borders. No, no, no. But right? that's legal immigration, so right? you can't get on a. No, 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 no. There, there's people who are sneaking in through Canada. There's people who are sneaking in through Mexico. It, it happens. Like you can't be serious. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that you just said. Children being separated at the border. So you were yeah. referring to black children. No, no, children. now we're talking about, you okay, said so you, we, we progressed. Okay. Now you, I know, you, I actually You was, talked I was about, still... you didn't know black people, um, you know, my, uh, migrated here. You didn't know that at, at, at high rates. So you didn't know that four out of the seven countries of Donald Trump's travel plan were like black countries, were like countries like black folks well, were coming from. I just know that Some of those people who were extremely Extremely productive. But let me read to you. Sub-Saharan countries, 39% uh, of Sub-Saharan Africans aged 25 and over had a bachelor's degree or higher compared to 29% of the total foreign-born population and 31% of the U.S.-born population Africans who 
migrate to this country are more likely to have these degrees than Americans who are born here. Have you watched my stuff on illegal? So you actually are agreeing with me. Like, so why I say that I'm against, like, why... Like, you just I, say you didn't know that no, no, no. blacks were coming I got here. confused okay. because you said All you right. started talking about the child separation. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you that why I agree with you 100% on what you just said. So I'm pro-wall. I'm like, if Trump offers $20 an hour, I'll go down and build it myself. Um, you wouldn't do it I would do it 20, right. a little more than 20 Look at that ring. Right? We ain't doing right. for 20 <laughs> <laughs> Well played, well played, okay? But what I will say is that, so what I say is to people, when people try to sell to the black community that we should be up in arms about, and I'm talking about legal immigration at the, mm -hmm. at the Mexican border, and you're talking about over 70% of all of the immigrants that come into this country come from the border. Yeah. Hell no. Why do we only take 2%, 2 to 4% from Africa? I would like to see a system where we stop allowing Mexicans because they are geographically positioned to sprint into this border and demand rights and get on welfare. There are so many people in Africa via a merit-based system who are, are, are more than worthy of having an American citizenship. That Those numbers are so low because of illegal immigration and they're coming and jumping over the border. So I'm actually very pro merit-based African countries, people that are trying to be doctors, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this rate of 2% that come from Africa every year. So I actually, that's actually the biggest reason I support the wall is because I, I don't think we have enough African immigrants in this country. And add that to our population growth has mm -hmm. stagnated because of Planned Parenthood. So I talk about okay. another thing that like a progressive policy that leads to regressive results in our community. You're going to get me on here talking like, about Planned like Parenthood. Like nine months you now, ripped out of the world. saying things like more babies are aborted in, in New, New York, York City, City than, than born. born. Now I'm a Christian, design. but and I'm pro-choice. The uh, I'm a Christian, but I'm pro-choice. But, they, but they, they, they light up the city and they celebrate that because it, look at Margaret, you know Margaret Sanger was an avowed racist. You know that her whole plot was to make sure that black the black population growth wasn't growing. And yet how can you stand his, his as what I need you. you to do, right? If that's how you feel. That's how I really if feel. If that's how you really feel, you have to produce irrefutable evidence of this. Irrefutable. Because I know people on both sides of this argument, right? Saying that she was a white supremacist who hated blacks. And I know people on the other side who want to build her up to be this hero. But what I haven't saw, what I haven't seen is that irrefutable evidence. Actually, people on the left and right agreed she was a racist. Uh, so that's me. why Hillary's walking now, back her, su her support for Margaret. What they say now is they've, they've edited and they've been like, now we have the, the proof that she's racist. Now they say, oh, but it ended up helping the community. And now you see all of these pro-abortion posters are black women. We're mm -hmm. being brainwashed to, uh, literally, it's a black genocide. Uh, the UN has five different definitions for genocide. One of them is purposefully stopping the birth of a certain community. That is happening in black America right now. So I'm staunchly pro-life because we're the only, 60% of all new births in this country are Latin American. Okay, I mean, are, are Hispanic, okay? I know that. Black community, plateaued. Literally, what she set out to do, she accomplished. Like, and I'm just trying to make the black community realize this. I, I, I want more black babies. So, I, so why I, are you I pro choice? I definitely want more black babies because I, I don't feel like we should be able to tell women what to do with their body. I can't force you to have a baby. I want you to have a baby, but I can't force you so to you have a baby. So you think willing, it's the right to kill someone? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not willing to use the law to tell a woman what to do with her body. You understand? Like, like no, I, I, I know how, and this is, you know what, this is where, this is where, right? I have, I have mentors who are black Panthers, right? And what we're sitting here is we're having a discussion, which you're learning and I'm learning, yeah. right? So this is one of those things that we won't agree on. So let's just get past it. Let's get back to talking about what black people, what the Democrats did for well, black people. Well, I'm just people. trying to, no, but I'm trying to understand. Right. No, but what I, what <laughs> let's I'm let's trying, just what agree to, to disagree. What I'm trying to reconcile, though, is that yeah. you, because this is a, actually a big problem, so I don't want to let it go. The mm -hmm. black birth thing is something that I speak about all yeah. the time when yeah. they're, because there needs to be more black births. Like, hello, yeah. guys. So you want to know why they're focused on illegal immigration and open borders? Because mm -hmm. we're about to be irrelevant. Our population is decreasing. Every 60% of all new growth, they're literally saying to the black community, here is your shovel. Dig your own grave. If we get you just for maybe one more election cycle, we don't need to focus on you. It's all going to be all about illegals. A new permanent underclass is going to be the Hispanic population. That's what their new focus. Democrat okay. Party sees Where that. Where have you been in the last year? Where have, in, the, in this everywhere, country? Everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, I travel right. six days a week. And what do you do? When you go to these places, um, I speak. I, I, I speak everywhere I can. It's my biggest thing is I try uh -huh. to speak, and I would like to be invited to more HBCUs because that's okay. like where I want to speak. But you can't just you walk in and talk. Up. No, they actually yeah, playing, they yelled I'm at me for three hours joke. straight. Yeah. They yeah. were like Kumar Kotam, and at the end, I was like, "I'm not afraid of you. I come from your community." Then it was like all hugs and love, and then I brought twenty of them to the White House to meet the president. Now listen, listen, right? What I didn't hear you say was, "I was in the projects 
teaching people about why they should be having babies. That's what I, but that's literally what I do. That's what black families are. This is, this, not, ain't no black, listen, ain't no black people coming, right? The black people, you want to reach with this message, right? But we go it, into the, the, the projects the, and invite listen, them. Listen, 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 you come in there, it's all about messaging my sister. Right. Like, like, you think about the mother of all rallies when I went up there. Like, if I, I said the same things that I always say to those people. I just put it in a way that was palatable. Right. A lot of people had a problem with that. But it's 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 about meeting people where they are. You go in there with a MAGA hat. People don't want to hear what you have I to don't say. Wear a MAGA hat and in the you are a walking MAGA hat. Fuck. Fuck. Call me a walking MAGA hat. <laughs> call me. That's really funny. But it is. It's yeah. Just, whatever. But, but like, OK. Come on. It's true. I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. You know what it's what like saying? now I've like, sort of become so, the symbol of someone that's super pro Trump, and like you go into these communities. But the truth is, I'm gonna tell you something that's amazing because I wear my MAGA hat always at the airport because mm-hmm. to me, it's like what Kanye said. It lets people know like you're not gonna bully me or tell me what I have to think. You're gonna have to debate me and debate my ideas. You're not gonna tell me I just want based know off of the color why of my you're not skin. Promoting a third party. But wait a second. I, I mean, I could if I could get behind. I, I actually feel like Trump in many ways is actually a third party. He's not really left or right. But, but um, he's been assimilated. But what I will say is that I wear a MAGA hat. And this is amazing, bub. I will get white liberals looking like Christine Blasey Ford. Your hat offends me. Black people don't give a shit. They look at me like, whatever. Like, they don't care. They don't care everywhere I go. And, I'm, and I'm, I, I find it striking. I actually wanted to, like, record and show people. Mm-hmm. They're just too busy. They just really don't. You know, they're just like, you know, whatever she's so. doing, it doesn't really matter to me. And two yet people. we have white liberals. Your hat offends me as a woman. Like, you know, I'm just like, get out of my face. See, the thing is. I've like, never had a like, black like, sister or like, brother say anything to me when I was walking down the street wearing a they do, they do run down on people for wearing these MAGA hats. But what you need to understand is, right? The same people who protest whenever Donald Trump sneezes now. <laughs> Literally now. When we were out in the streets being killed, the Black Lives Matter movement started under Democratic government with a black Democrat president. I'm fully aware of this. I marched from New York to Washington, D.C. to raise awareness of this. They didn't care. Like, they didn't care until that that racism, right, touched home. Now, to many... Not to you, but to many. Donald Trump is a symbol of racism. Let me go, right? So on November 9th, 2016, the day after he won the election, right, people woke up and said, holy America is racist. How could they elect someone who spews that kind of rhetoric, who has these types of supporters, right? But we stood... We stood on highways. Me personally, I was arrested. I've been shot with pepper spray. I have a torn uh, rotator cuff because police beat me up for protesting, right? When I didn't hurt anyone, whatever. We've been saying that for six years. But the majority of these white liberals didn't care about Black Lives Matter. In, or racism until Donald Trump came into office. But now, oh, he's racist. They didn't care about immigration. Yeah, Obama like, deported Obama more people. Or, Obama deported more people than any president in history. Than any president in history. I might not be perfect. I, I, I may be a lot of things. But I'm true to myself. I think and you I'm are. true to the people. I see things for what they are. It's 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 a joke to me. Like I care. I right. care about immigration, right? Like I, I care. I care about these issues. I grew up in a very diverse community. But the fact that they care about it now is like it's beyond me. Because they saw an opportunity to like, take down their political like it's, opponents. That's it's it. Beyond it's politics. Me. It's they politics. Fraud they're, frauds. They're, like they are really the, frauds. So the thing is is that you and I actually we disagree on the source, I think, of the problems and what yeah. the biggest problems are, but we agree on a lot of things. Like, and our, our stylistically, how we want to attack it is differently, right? Absolutely. So, I actually see Trump as an opportunity because they hate him so much that they're exposing themselves. Like, okay. you didn't care about any of this, right? And 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 now all of a sudden, by the way, Trump was celebrated in the media. They loved him. The guy had his own show. Diddy laid up on him at parties. All every he was in fraudulent- every rap song. Every rap song every was like Trump. Jeezy, T.I., Jay-Z, everybody Jay-Z, loved Trump. sipping yeah. poolside at Mar-a-Lago with Beyonce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, he's racist. Hello, black America, wake up, okay? His, like, his, you can't just his, t- turn somebody into a racist overnight. Know, you he was either happened? racist before. You know, you know what happened? Like The Democrats said, no, kill him. No, no, That's no, it. No, and no, and no, the black community just marched. You know what it was? You know what it was? There was things 
that he did on a campaign trail. Now, you'd have to admit, right, that he is a politician and he did what he needed to get elected. Even people who's like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who are like renegades, you get elected, you're a politician, right? right? So he would say things on the campaign trail and you'd be like, that's racist. Like, that, that, I, I can't believe he just said that. Perfect example, when the folks were protesting, right? When the folks were protesting at one of his rallies, and some of them were hit, and then they were, like, tossed out, right? And he said, yeah, if I was up there, I'd pop them. And yeah, it was a white protester. Though, listen, right? but listen, no, no, no. I, I saw I saw black protesters. It was white. It was white. I, I can show you video of black, go, no, black it, women being roughed up in no, his No, but rally. when you're talking about where he said, okay. I would take him around back, yeah. that was a white protester. And, and he said, in my days, these people would leave on stretchers. Right. Right? But it was a white protester. When, when you hear that. Right. When you hear things like that, and you see black women being hit and black men being punched by dudes with cowboy hats and cowboy boots, and that's all right, and him cheering that on, right? And you hear things like they be carried out on stretchers. Guess what? Um, what was his name? What was his name? William Lloyd Garrison, the abolitionist. Mm-hmm. White people who stood on the side of black people since... Our liberation or so-called liberation from slavery had been attacked by white supremacists. So even if it was a white person, it makes no difference because abolitionists. But it does um, make there, a there were there were people. No, it doesn't, it doesn't because there were people. There were the freedom riders, and there were people who gave their lives for civil rights. So the difference in a black man and a white man being assaulted, fighting for equal rights, it it, it makes no difference whatsoever. If you're talking about people being Carried out on structure, but we're just talking about perception. I'm not trying so to CNN indict. CNN seizes that I'm not moment. Here, I'm not here to indict him. Like you, you talk to me about CNN. You talk to me about Manipulate Fox black News. Like you talk to me about Fox News. <laughs> what? Are you in the Matrix? No, I no, thought no. you was unplugged. No, sister. no, no. What I'm saying, I thought you was unplugged. No, no. What I, 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 I am. I but what I'm telling unplugged. you is that so they use that moment, and most black people don't know that was a white protester. Listen, they just have Trump on still, stage saying, um, still, "Back in my day," and then they say, "Oh my gosh, he's racist." And I'm like, "Guys, he's yeah. talking to a white dude. Yeah. Like this is not racism." You know what so, I'm saying? So like when I was down in Charlottesville, right, and I was hit in my eye, and I was pepper sprayed, and I was defending people who were being attacked, and I was fighting back with my bare hands. You mean to tell me it wasn't people fighting against us without with 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 with, with, with make America great again hats? You weren't. You mean to tell me that a part of that 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 murderous click that was in Charlottesville, they weren't holding up Donald Trump signs? So let me so, ask- so that that's not right. that's not CNN. These are Republicans who are not dividing themselves, separating themselves from white supremacists. This is problematic. When you have the KKK marching the day after Donald Trump is um, the day after Donald Trump is elected. Now, now, when you look at me, right, and I say, hey, I'm not anti-cop. This is something that that I almost have to say to dis- disassociate myself from from people who just like, you know, uh, 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 kill cops or whatever. I'm not here to kill cops. I'm here to destroy this system that empowers cops, which is legislators. Black people die and go to jail. Cops get arrested and receive tons of shit. And the politicians get away scot-free when all they have to do is sign a piece of legislation to fix it. You talk to me about Donald Trump. Tell me this, right? If Donald Trump wants to fix a serious problem in black communities, which is police brutality. I don't believe that's no, a serious no, problem. No, 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 it is. Because what I'm telling you is, as a black man, you get harassed by police while walking. As a black woman, you have no rights. We had a barbecue for my father. My parents met at a civil rights rally, right? Like, like this shit is in my blood. Like, I was born on the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated years later. Mm-hmm. Like, this is who I am. I was sitting in a lot next to my fo- next to my building with my dad. Private property. My friend owns one in a little paved garage. And cops roll by and roll down the window. And and he has no authority on his property. This is a white man who's not really from our community, which is another problem. But this dude rolls by. He rolls down his window and he says, "What are y'all doing in there?" So well, it's private property. We're allowed to drink. We're allowed to cook. We're allowed to socialize. He said, well, I got a, a, a call 
that there was being drugs being sold out of this garage. Drugs. Nobody in that neighborhood. My father was like the mayor of my block. There was 60, 70. What gives this man in his late 20s the right to say that to my father? You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm walking down the street. My friends knew the cops were coming when we were young because they they, they said they, they watched my hands and I'd always put my hands up. Like, this is real. Like, you go to different communities and and police ride by. You think you might think it's nothing, but they stop. They roll down their windows, look you up and down. It's intimidation. Right. This happens in New York. It happens in California. It happens in the South. This is intimidation. Like, like we, we, we are caught up in this, this cycle, and they have this, this, this oppressive knee on our heads and their hands wrapped around our throats, and all we're saying is ease up. It happens in school. You see video after video of black child being beaten and 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 beaten by and mishandled by police officers and school safety officers. A black boy was just taken to jail in Florida because he didn't stand for the national anthem. Now, if Republicans love one thing, it's their constitution. This man was this young man was exerting his freedom of speech. Well, let me ask you a question. So, do you think that that never happens to white people? Like a I cop saw, never never rolls by and says, "What are you doing?" Let me tell you something. I have no business being here. Let me let me let me let me tell you something. Because I I think me, I think that me, your viewpoint is you that something. you're so hyper focused you on the black. You, you think you it's something. only happening. What did to I black say people? earlier, Bob? What did I say earlier? When black people get rights, who gets rights? Everyone. Everyone. So when we pass this legislation, though, my what wife, legislation are, my you, wife, are you trying oh, to pass? Come on, let's go. Um, we already passed two pieces of legislation this year, and I got thirty eight thousand parolees in New York City the right to vote. I also worked on the Fourth Amendment in Florida, which Republicans like Scott Adams helped us with. Right. I put in a call to him and he put out a blast and Republicans voted on Amendment four. Of course, so, Republicans are the ones leading the charge on, on prison reform. 100 percent. We're here. Right? South Carolina. We're, we're here. Yeah. We're here. The racist I, states. I want to get them into Louisiana. I really right. do. Right. Because people are sheep. And if it comes down from the top, when you have these billionaires, right, and these family offices all over New York City who are talking about prison reform and it's the new thing to do, then you have the people in the South saying, "Yeah, that's it." Tim you Scott's know, black, uh, that, that's it. That, that, that's that's it. No, this no, no, is, no, no, this no, 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 no. I, that's, that, that's a I fact am. that I'm going to correct because I obviously What's you know this? I you know I lobby for the first step back, so I know okay. this, the in and outs of this. Okay. Actually, Texas State mm-hmm. led the charge of a white policymakers, Brooke mm-hmm. Rollins, Doug Deason. White policymakers led the charge in realizing that they could save more money in their state if they could actually just implement simple changes to help the community, and they also make the streets safer, if they help people while they were in prison transition, help them get jobs. They're not back on the streets with $50 in a bus ticket. I went down into the prisons. You always ask who I'm doing for my community. How am I wrong? Hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. stop. I want to correct this because you're saying that they just did it and jumped on board, and they didn't. They, no, they what did I'm saying is people did it. No, no, I'm not saying black people. I'm, if you really want to go back, you have activists who've been advocating this for this for a very long time, right? Who've been advocating for prison reform for a very no, long I, time. No, I know that, right? but what I'm saying but is what that I'm, white what I'm people telling did you that. Is, this is a trend. Right, but, but, prison reform is a trend. It's it's like the new thing to do. You have people like Michael Rubin showing up, who's 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 a, a leading advocate. Michael Rubin, owner of what the Philadelphia 76ers and the New Jersey Devils, really who bad at helped sports. Okay, he helped Meek Mill get out of jail. Where was and, Meek Mill for the first step back? Where was you, he? What are you talking Meek about? Mill was supposed to go to the White House. What are you talking about? He was supposed to go to the White House to talk about prison. I went to, and I'm going to give credit to Van Jones right now because he did so much. I mean, we, we were like in the trenches on this, and he didn't care whether you were Republican or Democrat. He was there. He showed up for it. We started this back last in February. I, I have first step deck was all me because I grew up with uncles in prison. I visited my uncles in prisons. Mm-hmm. I went down with cameras, spoke to men that are in prison. If you didn't see my documentary that I did, like I'm doing stuff, you know, really okay. doing stuff, trying to okay. affect change because okay. yelling at Trump in the streets is not going to help the black community. Saying Trump is racist on CNN is not going to help the black community. Actually being there and working with the administration like Van twofold. Jones did, like Van twofold. Jones did, is how I you fix it. Twofold. So Meek Mill gets out of prison and he is invited to the White House. Colin Kaepernick has been invited to the White House. Okay, you're talking a big game. You're kneeling, you're out there, you're yell- yelling at the black community, you're saying it all needs to change. Now you have the opportunity to sit with the president, implement change, and what happens? Oh, we can't do that because the black community would be very upset if I showed up. So what the hell do we need you for? To make black Let people Meek upset Mills, and emotional? Now, now, see, the thing is, Meek Mills was instructed. By Jay-Z. Yeah, 
But who else is By under Jay-Z. who else is under Jay Z's thumb? Who? Van Jones works for Rock Nation. He's a member of Rock Nation. See it. I told you. You're unplugged. You're not part of the matrix. Well, you have to look behind the scenes. Okay. So what are you, you saying? You have to look. What I'm saying is, why yeah, would he tell Meek, Meek Mills, Mills not to go do Meek something? Meek Mills didn't go, right? Why? But everybody else from the first act joined Meek Mills on this whole new reform but thing. But I'm asking you a question. Why it's didn't Meek Mills go? Group. Why? Because he didn't want to negotiate with Donald Trump because Van Jones was negotiate in Topeka. for black people the, to have Dan better J- conditions. Van Jones ignorance. and Topeka were already there. His voice was already there no. and represented. And it was ignorant. In there and represent it. Like, Can you okay, admit it was ignorant? It's ignorant. What was, what was I don't ignorant want to negotiate about it. He's to get still, black. You, you can't complain he still about issues. achieve the same no, no, result. No, no. You like, cannot. You got to understand, everybody who goes and stands next to Donald Trump comes out of there singing his praises and looking like a coon. Why don't you just come and meet with this man the same way he meets with the world, with integrity and strength? Regardless, regardless of whether it's good or bad, he comes at it with a strength. The strength of a man, the strength of a business person. Who are you talking Donald about? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. He comes in with the strength. Why is it that every time black people meet with him and walk out, they singing and happy and tap dancing? Why they can't have that same truth? Why, why they can't have that same maybe, position? Maybe. Why can't you come out and say, hey, you know what? I don't like Donald Trump. But here's how we work together. That's business. Okay. You don't have to like somebody you do business okay. with. But why, why do people always have to come out singing his praises? That's why black people do not like it. Maybe. Because it looks like they uh, these people are being bought off. Do you ever think that maybe they just actually like him? Like may- maybe. Yeah, I'm just going to create an alternate universe here. Okay, ready? Maybe they have all these opinions of him in the same way that people who have all these opinions about me and then they're shocked when they meet me and they're like, oh my God, you're actually nice. Oh my God, you've actually lived through stuff. Oh my gosh, you're actually doing stuff in the black community, like going down to prisons and and and, and working and championing for things that can actually be done. Have all these opinions, then you meet them and you realize, hmm, maybe I just bought into a simulation that was created to me by a media that hates him. Wow. He's actually a okay. cool dude. I get it. I, I get like it. can tell so, you, he's really so, funny, so he's your, very likable. And point, by the way, he's the really likable. The point that you're asserting is that he has this Jesus-like ability. No, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm that, not. that whoever he touches, they have to walk away smiling. People can't walk but out with a straight face. maybe they just face. enjoyed the meeting. No, I, I, everybody? Like, Every single black person he encounters, either they, they come out smiling or with this. I met with him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell. Hey, I can, I'll be. I'll give you an insider, an mm-hmm. insider edition here. When I met with him, he's pointedly hilarious. He mm-hmm. takes. He, he he's um, self deprecating. Mm-hmm. Okay, he knows what's being said about him. Okay, he and, and he'll just get down to business. Okay, okay. what can I do okay. to help? I don't understand this. But do part. they have to walk out and smiling? He doesn't. It, it, do they have to walk out? Do they smiling have to walk like out with an great, angry? He's the greatest person in the world. They have to walk out angry no, to appease I, I, black I, I, America. Like, 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 they listen, had a good meeting. America, America, unfortunately, in this capitalistic society, we are we are more about money than we are about humanity. Why is it that everybody who comes out of these 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 these, these meetings are? Why do they have to be? Why can't it just be business? Why can't it just be like, okay, we sitting down, we getting down to business. When you leave, it doesn't have to be a Donald Trump PR stunt. Even if, if realistically, if he wanted people to respect the credibility of these black people, he would instruct them not to be happy. He would instruct them to be strong and walk out of that meeting not behaving like some happy slave. Okay, so just so you know, every meeting that I take, I walk out with a smile. Like, I just think that that's like, a, you take a business meeting, you have a good conversation, you shake hands, you smile, and you say bye. So you're insisting that black people act tough. Not all of them. When you walk out. Just I mean, go I mean, And be honestly, fake. You act really fake. He's, honestly, like, he's, likeable black. he's a likable guy. So I can tell you, he's funny. He's very it's, funny. It's, it's cool. And I, and it's I take cool it for that. It's a meeting. They okay. take it and they okay. leave. That's you know cool. what? Donald Trump. It's cool. Donald Trump. Why don't you, why don't you meet him? Why don't you, why don't you come on Thursday? Here, here, I'm bringing 300 black people to the White House. Why don't you come on Thursday? You know what I want to talk about? What? I want to talk about. Why don't you come? Do you want to meet Trump? Have you I, met I, Trump? I, I'm not going to, to play with people. What, what I'm in play? the business of liberation. I'm not just going to show face. Listen to what I want to talk about if I go to your White House. Right? I like that. My I, White I, House. I want to, I want to talk about it. You better believe it. Yeah. We could create a party. I like it. Or whatever. I like my White House. Listen, listen to me, man. All I want is police who falsify reports to go to jail. We agree. We spoke about this Without before. Question. We, we, we spoke about this before, if right? If reports are falsified, police should go to jail. Here's the thing. There is that blue wall of silence where cops protect each other, mm-hmm. right? And if a cop 
tells on another cop, then he's subjected to scrutiny. He's an outcast. That's he's true. A, I know the blue walls. I actually did a college a paper and I interviewed, um, and this is when I was actually more hostile towards police officers. I was like a leftist, a Democrat, whatever. And I, I, I got to interview um, the police chief in Rhode Island and I asked him that question, mm-hmm. um, is there a blue wall? And he, and he actually answered back, uh, absolutely. And he said that it's because um, like there is this like... It, one for all, off one, you know, all for How one mentality. How do you tear down that wall? Right. So that that's true. I mean, that, here's, and- here's what we do. Right. You prosecute these cops. They lose their pension. They lose their mortgages. They can't pay their bills. They lose their homes. Mm-hmm. They lose their liberty. They lose their freedom. So now you're allow- allowing a good cop to be a good cop because if we're cops and you tune somebody up, break their jaw, whatever and you do it unjustly, I'm looking at you saying like, bro, sis, all right? <laughs> if I'm looking at you and saying, if I help you, I'm jeopardizing my whole family and they're going to prosecute me. If they find out later that I helped you, I'm losing, I'm losing my livelihood. Mm-hmm. I can't do that for you. That's when you start taking down that blue wall brick by brick. Right. And but this that's, is but legislation that's a healthy that we discussion could, to have. I'm, I'm, is, I'm happy to talk about when cops do. do make mistakes or do yeah. something purposely, they should be prosecuted. You that's will it. not get an argument from me about a, that. A man what named I disagree Jamal with is this idea. A man that, named Jamal Lightfoot was in jail at Rikers Island in New York City. And Jamal was an advocate for bad people because I believe that our Constitution doesn't work unless it works for everyone. So just because you're a bad guy, your constitutional rights shouldn't be thrown out of the window. I'm not like everybody. I'm not a part of Black Lives Matter Global. They actually disassociated from me, right? Because we are free and independent thinkers. We were, we believed in Gillum, right? So we were in Florida on the ground. That's economic ignorance. Whatever, but, but so- we, believe, we, believe in, we believe in Gillum, right? Because he's black. Listen, that's about it. No, no, he was a better candidate. No, and he's a socialist. He's just... what, what's so bad about socialism? Oh my gosh. I'm not a socialist. What's so bad about socialism? See, and this is this is the thing well, I no, talk no, about. I just the black community's got to understand just, economics. I just, I just so, want to know. Let's see. It's killed 100 million people in the last year, in the last 100 years. Okay, it's been tried on every co- continent in the last 100 years, and it just mm-hmm. ends in people dying in communism. It's being tried actively right now in Venezuela. Uh, people are fleeing Venezuela. The average citizen has lost 18 pounds. You know what? But hey, you know what? You know what? Let's try you, it in America. Right. Let's you're try right. it in America. You're right. You you know why because and i remember distinctly that america refused to do business with venezuela and it was like these these terror whatever they're like we're not dealing with them but they still allowed our gas companies to go into venezuela and work with them like i hate the hypocrisy well the governments like, we work have, with governments we so have, they have a socialist we have, government we, have, we can't help that we, have, we don't we we have um our post offices we have our railroads. Now, I have a lot of socialist friends, but I'm not a socialist, right? I think that Americans, like, you know, welfare. I think Americans practice socialism in a lot of way. And welfare but, sucks. But people, no, you know, why does Harming welfare our community. suck? Why does welfare suck? Because it, it creates people that are de- that are dependent on the system, and they never get their head above water. Can I give you a gift? Can I give you a gift? If it's a and it's easy. You don't, you don't even need right. to use a lot of oxygen. What is it? Right? Welfare should be a crutch, not a wheelchair. Right. A crutch is for people who are going to be healthy again. Right. A wheelchair is for people who are in that state for a very, very, very long time. But they know that it and always become you. a wheelchair. I'm, I'm with you. Like, like I'm with you. Everything I socialized want, sucks. I want, come on, you want to talk to me? Talk to me about why Democrats don't go in and teach our kids financial literacy and entrepreneurship. Shaquille O'Neal going to give him a shout like, out because like, he like, admits like, that like, black people are economically ignorant. He this, admits it and he goes around and this, talks about this it. This is, but, but if we had government Stand behind socialists, funding, like, right, to go and teach this to our children, it would be awesome. It would. You want to know why we it, can't get ahead? Would. Because our idols are wearing Beto caps and, and the Gillum hats. And, and, and Rihanna's saying, vote for Gillum. And I'm like, vote for a socialist. Like, no, do you, literally, but, but, like, do you just want to, like, just decapitate the black community? Wait, but, the, dude, see, this is the thing, right? You, like, but, you, like, Americans are not stupid. It never stupid. works. Americans are not stupid. And you know you can't call a black person a monkey in America or make any reference anywhere close right. because it's just something that's inherently racist about it. You just can't do it. I said that and, I thought and, Valerie and, Jarrett and like a monkey, I, but I didn't know she was black. 
Yeah. And she does like a monkey. That, I'm not going down that road with you. I'm not I'm not disrespecting black women. She's not I'm black. I'm not calling black women. She's like women. 10% black. We need to I'm stop not, being I'm like... not calling women of color monkeys. I'm not here to no, disrespect people. But I'm not... I'm here to challenge the system. I'm not here to play around. I'm a liberator. See that? Liberation. I'm not here to play around. The black community is so too that, sensitive. So that's a joke. The black that's community is too sensitive. You know what? You know what? It's time we started being sensitive. It's time we started being no. offended. It's time that we started being mad. <laughs> How much mad more offended can we get? taking control you got Floyd Mayweather, of our destiny. You got Floyd Mayweather who, 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 who is being under fire destiny. because he's wearing Gucci right now. How yeah. much more offended can we get? How much more? Like, really? You know what? We need to be more offended. That's what you think the solution is? We Sambo, need to be more offended? Sambo, we need to be upset about Gucci? We got Sambo, blackface doesn't bother you. Excuse me? It doesn't bother you. Blackface. Sambo, like Sambo. You don't know what a Sambo is? I'm going to I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think if a if a, a little kid wants to dress up like Jasmine and she and because she idolizes her or wants to be Rihanna because she idolizes her, we need to stop teaching kids to to be a fe- to be offensive. I didn't know and this is a true story. I don't know why this is either because my my parents are, you know, they're on the left and they're they're pretty uh, they get offended easily. I didn't know what blackface was in my household and I grew up my grandpa too grew up mm. in San Diego. They never talked about blackface for whatever reason. And the first time I learned about blackface, it was this kid, Eric Schneider, a white kid with bright, bright blue eyes and like unbelievably like ice blue eyes. And for Halloween, he thought it would be really funny if he painted himself from head to toe black. And um, nicest kid ever. Like, I mean, they couldn't harm a fly. And he thought it would be funny because he'd walk through the hallways and just his eyes would show. So he wasn't even going as a costume of a black person, nothing. So he goes through the hallways and everyone's like, oh my God, everybody in the school Eric, coming up to Eric, you had the greatest costume. It's so scary, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden we find out third period that Eric Schneider, who couldn't harm a fly, got sent home. And nobody knew why, right? And the teachers and explained to us in school what blackface was. So we actually are learning stuff that we've gotten over already, like right. So that wasn't in my conscious as a child, right? And I learned it that I should be offended. Teaching people that they should be offended Listen, is what's something. going on now. I mean, and I, I don't. I'm not. And I, I, if somebody was, was tap dancing have, and doing I have, that, I, have, I, have I would be offended. But I'm not offended when a little daughter, girl wants to be Pocahontas. I have a beautiful and, and daughter a, who's two years old, right? Who doesn't understand that if she points a gun at people and shoots them, that it would hurt them. I have to tell her that so that she doesn't do it and she doesn't harm people. So you, you don't this think that you should just let people and it's not, offensive? Like you can't. I'm not. You, I'm not listen, offended by people that want to dress good. up like their idols. My sister is good. It's good for you, but you can't tell Bob over here what to feel. Like you can't tell Bob if. You know, you pull Hawk's goatee, you pull Hawk's beard, Hawk doesn't hurt, so why does it hurt you when I pull your beard? You can't tell people what to be offended by. Um, but, but that's you my point. You can't so, tell so people that's my what point. triggers So th- their that trauma. Katy Perry had to recall like, her shoes a couple of weeks ago because they looked too much like blackface. And I'm like... Good. Good. Do you, you understand how they use blackface? You understand how they humiliated black, us? How they tormented? Shoes. How they tormented our people? Like That's Gucci black knew feet good too? and well not Gucci, what not they her were Gucci doing. Shoes, Katie Gu- Gucci knew good and well what they were doing. Pepsi, when it made that dumbass commercial last year, sister, I have been pepper sprayed. I have been beaten by the police. I have been targeted. I have been targeted for arrest. So you don't think context leading, matters? Just for leading protests in Pepsi. Gives Kylie Jenner a check to go and hand a cop a soda. When when Antifa was tearing up Washington, D.C., you think a soda would have stopped them? When the white supremacists were killing Heather Heyer in, 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 in Charlottesville, you think a soda would have stopped them? But this is this is how they make light of our struggle. And we cannot have that. We have to teach people now. Listen, I'm not part of this overly PC world. You, well, you okay? said you're happy um, Katie um, Perry's um, shoes um, got um, recalled. But, 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 but the reality of it is, the reality of now. it is, if it's triggering and it's traumatic and it's symbolic of 400 years of oppression, then it should be done away with. No one, no one has effectively addressed the oppression of black people in this country to date. And this is what we are doing at this table. So this is, in my opinion, this is how we arrive at Jesse Smollett. So black people are just taught to be offended everywhere every time you see something. And so we're actually creating a permanent class of victims in the black society where everything offends black people all the time. Like literally things that don't even offend people, they teach you how to be offended. And it's harming the black community. There's no question that this mentality that you're that you're saying right now is harming the black community. This is, this is 100%. 100%. So 100%. I'm offended. I can't people hear. People from hanging from trees? But 
that's that that would be like, real. We, we I got, would be upset about that. Killed. Like, I, but I would we be were but I'd be killed. upset about that. But like, you are like more people, offended by people, things. People promoting negative stereotypes about black people talking like idiots and only loving chicken and watermelon and always happy and dancing around like coons people promoted but now, but now, that but now stereotype we're talking of about, us but stop, and now let they're me finish. I let you talk. introducing I, let me, that let me talk because I let you talk now you are promoting that and I asked you the question could, should Katy Perry's shoes have been recalled they were shoes that could have been I guess looked like blackface if you were really looking to be offended they pulled them off the shelves so now black feet is a thing I don't even know what that is that is pointedly Ridiculous! It's stupid. It's unbelievably I don't know stupid. Megan Kelly losing but, her job for opening a conversation that should be open because what she said, I felt when she was on NBC and she said, "When I was a kid growing up, people, it was okay if if you were actually trying to be the costume, like when little girls or like this appropriation thing, like when little girls are actually a fan of Nicki Minaj or actually they're actually celebrating Black culture and they're getting yelled at and called racist. Like they they want to be you because they actually love you so much that they want to dress up like you and they're like your little girl is ra- four year olds and five year olds." Don't know how to be racist, okay? They're wearing it because they think whatever. Why oh, not oh, teach oh, people like, parameters? The, 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 no, but no, why stop, not stop. Why parameters? not let kids be kids? Like, why not teach people safe? Why not let kids be kids? Oh, okay. So why not let little Tommy stab little Jake with a knife? That's not what kids do. Yeah, no, no, no. But there, like, uh, there really, is like, emotional that, harm. No, no. There's so emotional, who? Uh, you, to, you, you to, can't to, stand, to, you can't stand a four-year-old that loves oh, okay. that loves you so much. They want to dress up like you for Halloween. Let me, so you have okay. to teach them and lecture them that they're doing something wrong. So kids this are is what's not wrong with society. kids. You're kids are not fun. harmed. Kids are not harmed by being teased. teased. Kids are not bullied in committing suicide because people are making fun of who they are. I told you, you have a responsibility to your listeners. You must be responsible. Things hurt people. If we can avoid, if we can avoid hurting people, no. then we should do this. I, I hate bl- black. I, 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 I hate black men. Offends me. No, no, no. Okay, okay I'm glad people it does. I'm glad it does. But I'm gonna tell people, you, it offends good. I'm, me. I'm glad you said like, it. But okay. I'm talking about. Four year olds yeah. dressing up as their mm-hmm. idols, and what I will not okay, take. So and my you, you platform would, is that prove, the weakening of black prove, men is problematic. You would the weakening of a four year strong... old who admired Hitler dressing like Hitler and going to school? What? No, of course not, because that's no, what four year old would admire Hitler. You're being ridiculous. Bomb drop. That's not a bomb, bomb drop. drop. That's not a bomb, bomb drop. That's, drop. That's such no, an extreme. No, no, what no, Hitler, no. What no, Hitler? If, okay. What little oh. four year old is like, I just read a book on the Holocaust and the slaughter there, of Jews. There is. There I are, just said to you, a little girl children, dressing up as there Pocahontas. There are children with internet you're being, you're, access. You're being okay, extreme. So make it, make you know it you're six, being extreme. Seven. You know you're make being it extreme six, right seven. now. A kid sees something around no. his house. He sees something around his house. He or she likes the way the Third Reich look. They like that swastika. Oh, they want to wear it to school. They want to wear. You know, they want to wear swastika. I'm going to move school. on from this because you know the argument makes no, no sense. No, no, you know so why I'm gonna, you're backing no, up no, because okay. you'd allow for Jewish people to be offended, but you won't allow for black people to be offended. I said just and that's Pocahontas, the power, not That's a the power member. of Jewish people in this country, and that's the kind of power I want black people to have. Okay. I have a relationship with the ADL. Do you know that every crime? Against a Jewish you're person in New York you're not, City, you're not, you're not every crime, ideological sense. every crime against Jewish people in New York City is investigated as a hate crime, and the ADL sees to it. That's power. Okay, that's power. Stop. That's power. I want to clarify something because people are listening to be, be clear here. I said a little girl dressing up as Pocahontas mm-hmm. because she idolized her from a Disney movie would not offend me. I did not say a little girl dressing up as a KKK member wouldn't offend me. So correlating this to how I'm making exceptions for Jews is is or they have power is is painfully wrong. It's painfully no, no, no. wrong. But the the blackface. If you're if you are genuinely to me, if, blackface if, is yes. offensive. Yes. Yeah. No. A, a, see, and a little girl dressing up as Pocahontas face, is not a racist. The blackface is racism. And if she doesn't know anybody, if she doesn't know any better, people has have to tell her. People have just like somebody had to tell them, like, listen, that 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 swastika that you want to put on, it's not cool. It's not cool. Somebody has to tell that little girl, like, listen, throughout the history of America, people have went worn blackface to insult and humiliate and degrade black people. So it's not cool for you to do that. I disagree. Adamantly, period. Done. I disagree adamantly. I, I think I think we have to we have to, we have to allow people to celebrate black people. Okay. And so, so I disagree with the whole appropriation listen. thing, where like now, uh, you know, Nicki Minaj, if you wear Bantu braids, she says you're appropriating from black people, but she'll wear a, 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 a wig with with blonde hair, and that's all let's that. Have some fun. All of that is creating let's, segregation. Let's, let's, let's and have some I, fun. I don't like it. So. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. 
when white women go out and get plastic surgery mm -hmm. to have butts. Mm -hmm. Like, society likes it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the Kardashians are beautiful. It's a thing now. Right? It's a thing now. Big lips. It's a thing mm -hmm. now. When black people had it naturally, they had monkey lips. And black women had big old African booties. So you're admitting society's moving forward? No. What I'm saying, and what that argument around appropriation is, is things are not acceptable in America until white people do them. That's that argument. Okay, but do you think do you think that, that it's it's helpful to say that now black people white people that enjoy certain elements of our culture, they have to be yelled at and told that they're not allowed to wear cornrows, for example. So you think of that you think of that helps should. us? Like do you just want a permanent no, no, like no, 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 it's 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 not. It's about healing and it's about acknowledgement. Acknowledge people's pain. So why like, do you think if, it if, is if, that if, you're if I, more pained by society than say my grandfather who I sit and talk with about stuff, why does it seem that this era of black people are more oppressed than the people that actually lived through systematic blacks and whites walk on the blacks walk on this side, whites walk on this side? Why do, why do you think that is? Your grandfather might feel differently than my grandfather because my grandfather had to take my grandmother, my aunt, and my mother out of a back road in his town. They couldn't turn on the car. His friend helped him push it because a white sheriff wanted to kill him. Yeah, my so, grandfather survived so, the KKK. So, so, no, see, what I'm talking about is a specific instance. Mm -hmm. Don't dismiss our trauma. I'm not. I'm this not. Is, this this is, is, I didn't. Is, this no, 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 no. no. This, you're being. Just you're, let he, me explain it to you. But let me explain. But you you're said, insinuing I dismissed trauma. Said, I asked a very said, simple question. You said you asked me a question. Yeah. Let me the answer. I think Allow it's actually. Let me the answer. Don't be mad because I'm making a great point. Let me finish. Okay. Okay. My grandfather was chased out of a town. Mm -hmm. Right? So your grandfather and my grandfather have two different opinions. Like, I have a, another uncle who was a merchant marine who was murdered by some young kids in our town in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's that black crime. So when I look at I look at these kids, I say, you know, they kill Uncle Um really. But what were the circumstances around it? Yes, you should be punished. But what were the circumstances around you? Are you going to a penal system that will heal you? Are you going to a place that will reform you? Or are you just going to a place that will make you more of a gladiator? But why are we so angry now? Yeah. It's because so much has happened since the civil rights movement. We haven't made any substantial gains. Black unemployment is still two times that of white folks. Um, the wealth gap is still prevalent. We are still facing these hurdles. It should have been done away with a long time ago. And I think people are just tired of it. And when you look up and see Eric Garner saying, I can't breathe 11 times, and someone's still choking him, and he dies, it's not about Black Lives Matter being the biggest issue, but it's the most inflammatory. Because you look at that Black man being choked to death by this man who has the authority of the entire country, and no one helps him, and no one gets punished, and he gets away with killing this man. And now he has two, you know, he's had two pay raises. The only person that was punished out of that whole Eric Garner ordeal was a black woman who was like a lieutenant or something. Like, and then you, you let's just take this frustration, just just take this ride with me. You look at the mayor of the um, of New York City, Bill de Blasio, mm. who's this captain of the progressives, this champion of the people who has this interracial son who has an Afro and he pulled out for the election and said, my son, I don't feel safe with my son walking through the streets of New York. Mm -hmm. That mayor did nothing to discipline this police officer for years, right? And when we pressed him, we, the activist community of New York City, pressed him and said, why, why, why aren't you doing anything? He said, "We well, the case is in Washington, and we want to see what they do first. So me... I stood up and said, you hate Donald Trump. You say he's a racist. 
a bigot and this is who you're waiting for to give justice to this this killing we see as being racially motivated you're a hypocrite you're a hypocrite you can't stand that man you say there's no hope for justice in him and you're waiting for him to react eric garner you know when Barack Obama brought Eric Garner's case back to Washington, D.C. and said New York wasn't doing what it was supposed to three weeks before the election so he could raise attention and give Hillary a boost. These people don't care about us. That's why we mad. That's why we so frustrated. Because this country that we built, tobacco fields were drying up, Cotton saved America. We were the labor force. We built it, right? And it's just like so. You think you think Black Americans built America? With pro quo, like okay, we do, we did, right? We built the White House, free labor. This empire was built on our back, right? And we we we've, we've done our part. Crispus Attucks, the first person to die in the Revolutionary War. It's a black person. We've done our part. Like, when's America going to say, hey, we care? Throw the immigrant thing at me. And I say, you know what? You're right, Candace. Like, black people should get priority. Right? Like, this, and and, uh, black people should be acknowledged. You throw a number of issues at me that Democrats bounce around from. Xenophobia. You know what I mean? Like, they fight for everybody. And they just bring up black people when it's convenient. You look at these marches, they hold up in racism signs out of convenience, right? And then we look at the Republican Party, and like we agreed, they gave up on winning the black vote. And when you want to win someone's vote, you do something for them. So you ask me why we're angry? And it's because nobody cares. And if we get mad enough, maybe we'll get active enough to bring ourselves out of this situation. I'm not looking for America to deliver its liberation to black people. I'm looking for America to do its part, right, in an effective way. Um, Do I think the First Step Act was effective? Yeah. I think that prison is is serious. Criminal justice system needs reform. But financial literacy needs to be addressed. I think food injustice needs to be addressed. Um, I don't see how people could... I was about to go political, and I don't want to do that here. Um, food injustice needs to be addressed. We need to stop these 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 people from poisoning all Americans. Right? Because you go into rural areas, you got fat white folk. <laughs> you go in rural areas on the other side of the track, you got fat black folk. We need to stop these food companies from poisoning us. Like, what I say, I want to liberate black people, it's because I want to make black people productive, more productive than they are, so that we can make this country better. I still say, The cure to cancer might be sitting in a cell in somebody's brain in Rikers Island. Uh, These little street corner entrepreneurs. Could be sitting in a black woman's womb, but we'll never know. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's solid. Solid, too. And, um, like, I grew up in the hood hood, right? And I had friends who told me to read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, what's his name? Jack Welch, GE. That's a good stuff. These yeah. are drug dealers, successful drug dealers. No, I agree with that. And that's why I agree they with programs, me, programs for people that are in prison. That's it, right? Because when but I do work when in a, that space, you know what I'm America, saying? Like, I don't have people. Pr- I don't. I don't. I see no value, and and this is I think where you and I are different. Is I I just don't see the value in people screaming in a street, potentially getting themselves arrested or pepper sprayed and all that stuff. Like you know. Um, I genuinely just don't see the value in that. I think that you have to 
learn to work towards what you want. I, I believe, I mean, this is really where I stand. I believe the black community can do it without government handouts. I'm insulted by the insinuation that black people aren't smart enough to figure out how to get ID. I think we're over overly sensitive. You're harping on it. Uh, hold on, hold political. on. I'm just, Stop I'm not, political. I'm not. I think because we're I overly sensitive. You're right. But I'm just saying, I believe we're overly sensitive and that be, because we are overly sensitive, our emotions are able to be harnessed by people that just want political advantage over others. And that is why we are seeing people that are demonized and called racist. And if we don't start to think to start to think clearly and set aside emotion and have conversations, um, and this is really Blex values just conferences. We talk about abortion, we talk about all these different What's issues. Blexit? The black exit. From what? The left Democrat Party. And going where? Independent. I've never on a stage told anybody to vote Republican. But most of them are saying go vote. Go no, Republican. no. You should you should come to a Blexit rally. You should. There's one. We're doing one in Richmond to, to as a response to Northam and the hypocrisy of the left. And you should see what we talk about. I just Larry I've Elder seen, will talk about I've father seen, absence. I've seen a lot of MAGA hats there, right? I've seen a lot of MAGA hats. These are Republican ideologies because when you go on Fox News and you talk about the Democrats. They're people who can only logically infer that you're telling them to become Republican. But no, but anybody that actually follows me knows that I always say that I believe in Trump. I have issues with both the left and the right. But that what you're seeing the MAG has in is that there is a black conservative movement that believes in Trump. And, that makes but, sense. But, and you say and that you want to talk you, you, to you want to talk to the community. Why don't you just come see people that I just have a different always, perspective? I always talk to the community. Right. I'm sitting here with you. Come, you, you should come. To, you should come to a you black. Have, city. You have a different perspective. I don't want to be seen as promoting something that I don't agree with, right? So that that's problematic for me. If people were I would I would go to speak ideals. at a Black Lives Matter rally. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I go speak at HBCU. Um, people that don't um, agree with me in a room. You mean to tell me at a whole HBCU, all those black people, nobody agrees with you? You talking? You you talking about who shows up for you? You know what I mean? You talking? No, no. About, what I'm saying is that it's a who, it's, 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 shows, a, it's an environment filled with people that have different you. ideologies. Like, I, please, right? I went with with with. I went to um. You know, I went to Howard Law School, and they were like Yale graduates who were the super duper most conservative people you'd ever want to meet. Like, there are people in those institutions. There's just people. These institutions are very diverse. But what I just want to bring you back to is when we talk about people's um, names being removed from voter rolls and I will look into broken it. machines. Like, once you look into it and, and once you look to, into these lawsuits filed against the Republicans for these oppressive practices, then it's, it's, that's something that, that, that's very important to me. Um, you look at the Bronx. Uh, in districts where you have the party, What's happening is gentrification, right? You're familiar. You like, believe that this exists. The gen you mean like society being there and then white people coming in and, and pushing all the black poor people out well, and brown poor people. The out. problem is if white people don't show up, they call it when white people leave, they call it a white flight. When white people show up, they call it gentrification. So do we want white people to come or leave? Can we just um, decide? There's because a big difference. <laughs> there's there's decades between these things. I know, but so the, they, they, no, if but, they're wrong either way, I just don't you know. There, there, there's they decades the between these things, and and what what happens with white flight is less policing, is deterioration of schools. So there's there's resources that are left. I'm just saying, white, we that, can't that, that, that the government <laughs> provides. So right? the white people so are wrong either the way. Government. So so what I'm talking about is gentrification. Is um, when you have gentrification, they're coming. And, and taking advantage of these uh, lower incomes in these neighborhoods where 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 people are easily manipulated into selling their property and they're exploiting people's ignorance. Like what I'm saying is, leave black people in their neighborhoods. You didn't want to be there during the crack epidemic. You didn't want to be there all alone. Leave them alone. Don't come and exploit it now just because you can't afford to live amongst your own. Don't don't come and exploit. Our neighborhoods. Okay, but so the way that capitalism making, works is that when they making, do that, everybody's like life and living standards gets better. How so? What do you mean? How so? What, so, for example, and look, we're, we're running over time here, but when, when Amazon says that they're going to build quarters somewhere in a neighborhood, it means that 25,000 people get jobs. 
that helps that helps the price of living go up. So I understand what you're saying, which is that what about people that don't get don't get jobs and they have to go live on the outskirts? But like you, 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 we can't argue both ways. This is what the problem that I have with the black community. It's like we want segregation and we want inclusion at the same time. It's like don't come into our neighborhoods. Oh, come, but if you don't if you don't come into our neighborhoods and you're racist, right? If you, if you do come into our neighborhoods and you're gentrifying it, it, it's just crazy. Who says if you don't come to our neighborhoods you're racist? What, the whole white flight thing when they say that like when white left, people leave, they burn down buildings. No, no, you're leaving that. out a lot. No. You're leaving out no, 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 a lot. No, I'm not, I'm not talking, talking about, about I'm not the Bronx talking about, burning down. You, come on, you, you're leaving out no, a lot. I'm talking about in general when people, when white people can't. leave a community, yeah. right? They yeah. call that a white flight. And they say that, and that, they leads, and that it leads to, that it, it rightfully leads to an economic collapse because if, okay. they're, if they're providing jobs, it's okay. going gonna to lead to an economic collapse. But we can't, I'm just saying that we as a black community cannot have it both ways. We just can't, we can't, and we can't say like, we want a society that's stimulated and then say that's appropriation. Listen, listen, what we're saying is, uh, let us build up our communities, give us the same access and the same resources, and for God's sakes, right? What white community you go in where the majority of the teachers are black and brown? But you go into our community, it's people who don't look like you, us. You look. You, 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 you look at the NGOs, the nonprofits. The majority of the nonprofits in our communities are ran by white folk. Like, if you really wanted to empower black people, teach them. Give, put them in positions of leadership and advise them. We have to change the way we really see this equation. Like if you want to go in, and I work with a lot of white folk, right? And, and funny, funniest thing is like most of my bosses have been like these really wealthy, old, white, conservative men, right? Back when I was, you know, a suit, right? And we always had these kind of conversations and they respected me because of my views, so what I'm telling you is... Well, I want you to actually tell it to you because this is how we actually wrap every episode is uh -huh. that we want every person that comes into the podcast to have the opportunity to say something for two minutes to speak directly to that camera. And if you could leave a message and an imprint on the world, if, if you knew that every single person was going to watch this podcast and you could say something and that was going to become like a thing instantly, what would it be? You have two minutes. Bub has the timer. That is the camera. Mm -hmm. And your mark... Get set. Hawk Newsom's two minutes. We are one. And as one society, we'll never be okay unless the least of us is okay. We can't leave people behind. Um, there's no reason that the value of a dollar should be worth more than the value of a human life. I'm not saying that people shouldn't achieve whatever they want in life, but there shouldn't be people starving in America. There shouldn't be hunger in America. And for God's sakes, there shouldn't be racism in America. People have the opportunity now to stop playing games with systemic oppression and really eradicate it. You eradicate it through institutions. You improve our schools in a real way. If you want black people to stop, quote unquote, relying on the government, then you teach them how to fish instead of giving them fish. If you want peace in our communities, then you empower those organizations that are doing peace work and employing ex-gang members to go in there and mediate differences. And I'd say... Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I live by two codes. I live by the Bible and the Constitution. And I believe that both of them are the foundation to a bigger, a beautiful, a more beautiful, a, a better America. We can do away with our past once and for all. That's why it keeps coming up because we've never done away with it officially. We can do away with our, our wretched, cursed pass and we can build a beautiful future i invite all of you to do that with me that's awesome look i think it, per, oh my god that was really close oh, to two minutes that was amazing one minute six seconds done this before. yeah right, right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean look if nothing else i think people have to just see both sides of it and just yeah. stop demonizing and making it seem like like you know, like the girl crazy on the left or they're crazy on the right. There just has to be more of this. There has to be more conversation right because. On. 
Thank you guys for watching the latest episode of The Candace Owens Show. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. As many of you guys already know, PragerU is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which means we need your help to keep all of our content free to the public. Please consider making a tax-deductible donation today. I would really appreciate your support.